Hey folks, this is Ben Gessel. How's it going? Um, I, I was trying to make a video, but I guess for some reason my phone kind of short-circuited or just some, did something really weird or something. I'm not sure what was what happened. So I lost that video. So I'm going to try to go back and fix that here with this video. Um, what I want to talk about here is how I got into private teaching. How I just started building my teaching studio. But before I get, there's some things I need to mention before I, I get into all that. So I had in mind to be a band director. So I was first in the Linwood area because I was teaching, student teaching at Eisenhower Middle School. But then so when that didn't really work out, when I was evaluated and it's just like, this isn't going to work out. And I had to, uh, I dropped the class or, you know, my teaching thing was just derailed. But I had great grades and everything, of course, in college. I had to go with Plan B, so I worked at Canal Keys for a year and a half. And I became, you know, familiar with not only Ed Edmonton College, which I knew from doing a little bit of you know, student teaching stuff. But, you know, certainly the Central Linwood. I lived in the Central Linwood area, and I knew uh, Southern Everett because I went to church there and I had church friends that were in Southern Everett and thereabouts. Um, we went and dated a girl that was over in kind of East area. So I drove, drove around a little bit. I was getting to know the general area of Southern Everett, Everett itself a little bit. Um, Linwood, uh, Edmonds, um, just some surrounding areas. Um, I bet Cathcart, I think, is one of the places, you know. And this is all going on, working at Kenley Keys, you know. I was considering what to do. You know, I knew I didn't want to just do music sales, you know. But I stuck with it for a while. And this is all going on 2007 to... 2008. Um, when I stopped working at Kelly Keys, long story there, but kept teaching there, I really didn't have much in the way of any students at first, of course. And I was looking for work, additional work. And that was a little rough time in a way, but it, I wasn't, at least I wasn't doing sales anymore, which is. I was full doing full-time sales before then. And so, you know, I was playing piano, I think, Kennelly Keys, and there was a gentleman that came up to me and was really impressed with my playing. And so he said, you know, wow, he offered to, have, you know, have me teach his son, his daughter, uh, piano lessons. So I, you know, agreed. And, uh, gosh. Anyway, I was... I was teaching horn there at Kinley Keys, but I hadn't really on the had any students yet. And I had there was a girl that I was teaching piano lessons to from church. And so um I started out my teaching pool with really just a handful of students. It was this gentleman, his son, his daughter, this girl I knew from church, and um I think I got a I think I had a horn student eventually, kind of like he is for a bit. He was a pretty good player, like I'd say maybe early advanced level, late intermediate to early advanced around that ballpark. And so this was kind of my teaching pool. And plus there was a few other people I knew from church that I taught a few lessons to and nothing too serious. Uh, but this was my teaching pool in the 2000 and uh, I'd say 2008. Well, actually, this is too, but closer to 2009. 2009 ballpark. This is kind of who I was teaching. And then pretty soon, I started teaching the oldest son, then eventually his middle son, and then the youngest son, of a Cambodian gentleman who was the son of uh, Death Pran, who was the main uh, source for the material for the movie The Killing Fields. 
This is about uh, the Cambodian uh, Civil War when the uh, Khmer Rouge took over Cambodia. And so that was kind of really cool. Really cool to know him and meet him. And they were very awesome. I know him very well, this gentleman. Very, very well. And um, so anyway, I know his mom and everything. Yes, and very much so. And then um, I remember he referred me to another gentleman who was a congressman in the area. And then I started teaching his two boys. And then he eventually referred me to, after a bit, to these, uh, this other family that had three girls. I started teaching them. And meanwhile, I was building my teaching pool, take lessons. I started working for take lessons uh, with 2009 ballpark. And I had a few students that didn't last too long. An older gentleman, I taught him. He was so old, he was at a nursing home, you know, and uh, awful. I remember, remember going to that nursing home to teach him a few lessons and he did, ended up dying. So I taught a few girls over in uh, Kirkland. And, you know, I don't, uh, there were places I hadn't been to before that, or, you know, I mean, I, I had lived when I was five, four or five years old in Redmond, three, four, five, whatever. And, uh, you know, Kirkland when I was two, three, so I barely remember a lot of these places. Kirkland a little better, but I mean, Redmond a little better, but, and I had, I knew the Redmond Duval area from spending time with Michael Bryan and the Greenwood area, North Seattle from spending a little bit of time with my great uncle Don and Aunt Elaine. And there's those little memories I had before living in the area, you know, bit by bit in Seattle, downtown Seattle and stuff. But, but really just, I really came to know the area first. It was, it was Linwood, uh, Linwood and surrounding areas. I was Linwood up to Everett over to Edmonds and out East a little bit. Um, and then just my knowledge of the area spread bit by bit, but a lot of these places I remember going to, I hadn't, I hadn't been, I was not very familiar with. So it's like kind of cool to explore a little bit, see all these different places. And, you know, spending some time on YouTube, trying to, you know, hear new music. I was just getting more used to the, the website. I was on Pandora, you know. Um, just, yeah, and trying to figure out ways of getting new students. I remember, and then of course there was a student I started teaching in North Bothell that was a teenage girl. She was, um, I could tell she was going to be a little bit more skilled. And so we went quite a ways, you know, beyond just elementary level. We, we definitely progressed a lot. And and this Cambodian gentleman, uh, he referred me to a Vietnamese family who had a daughter who just took off. She was amazing. Had the sweetest personality. Just the sweetest, kindest girl I can imagine. And uh, very, very bright. And we, we just went all the way through to like early intermediate stages when she was done. And she's only, I think, eight when they switched over to Suzuki or something like that. But I was kind of sad to, to lose her as a student, but she was an amazing student. Just amazing. And then this Vietnamese family referred me to eventually to another Vietnamese family. But, you know, I'm getting ahead of myself here a little bit. Um, at a certain point, this would have been uh, probably in the... I remember moving from Linwood to basically south, southernmost Everett, Ever Everett kind of picnic point north, you know, Linwood, whatever border. That would have been around the 2000 and I want to say 2009 ballpark, 2009, 2010, right in that range, general range. And then I moved to uh, Everett, um, really close to Boeing Field during 2011, 2012. Um, anyway, during the, the 2009, 2000, 2010, I'd say, 2010 to 11, remember, 
I had started working as a janitor part time. And I was working as a janitor late nights, very late nights, and teaching before then, in the early afternoon, generally speaking, to, you know. And so, uh, you know, that, at the time that I was a janitor, I was probably I probably had in the ballpark of about a, the low teens. I had a few horn students at Kennelly Keys. I had some, I had a handful of students, at least that were mostly piano students that take lessons. And uh, I started start teaching again a boy over at Edmonds, you know, eight, nine, ten year old boy. He, he taught him for a while. I taught him for a while. And um, you know, I taught some other folks from the church. Uh, and then I had these uh, great piano students that started out, all sorted out from this one family in Briar. Yeah. Uh, and all these referrals. And um, so that's probably up in the low teens. And then when I quit the janitor job, it was, I think, before I moved to, to did I quit before moving to Everett? I think so. But I remember having a student in, uh, originally they were in Linwood, but they moved to Mukilteo. I kept teaching him. And then they were just overjoyed with my teaching, a Chinese mom and a white uh, dad. And then a really good family, two kids that were really, you know, great kids. And then they referred me to another family who had, well, I taught their son composition. And they referred me to another family in the area that had some daughters uh, in Mukilteo. And this family referred me to another family who had two other daughters. And then they referred me to another family, Michael Tio, who had a daughter. And so I was teaching a lot of girls in Michael Tio. And eventually, you know, some of my students, you know, I mean, I, I was teaching a lot of students. At one, uh, I got up to about 20 or so students at, at this point. I was in that ballpark, pushing into 20. And um, I remember um, in my take lessons pool of students was gradually getting bigger. Um, so I had, I, had, I had taught at this point some folks from church. I taught some horn students. And there were other additional horn students I got at uh, Kennelly Keys. They didn't. Some of them lasted a while. Sometimes I had a few, but never too many at once. And uh, yeah, I had some intermediate students, horn students. And then I remember having um, a really good, more advanced um, hornist in high school, Uncle Tiaria, at one point. Um, and then kind of the 2012 ballpark, 12. Uh, 13 kind of, and then, um, yeah, so I mean, like in the twenties, low twenties, as far as numbers of students, um, but it was a wider variety and I'd also been, um, it, it was, it was a quite more of a, I was getting more of a wider variety of ability levels and I was teaching a wider variety of different kinds of personalities and dispositions and I had been using a few different methods by this point I not only bastion piano but um, I had been using uh, Faber and Alfred Premier piano course Alfred and on horn I already knew what I was doing on the horn uh, piano we were I mean in, there was a student I, teenage student I had over north Bothell, that was really interested in pop, so there's a lot of pop stuff we were doing. So eventually we get to kind of 2000, let's say 2013, 2014 ballpark. And I moved from Everett to like Picnic Point, and I have my own place, you know, kind of thing, or at least I'm more in charge of the place a little bit. And 
I'm teaching more students to take lessons than ever before. Starting to get students down in Bellevue, even. And, uh, man, at the take lessons, pool of students was just growing like crazy. Uh, had some more East Indian students, um, in particular. But others as well. And um, I remember moving to Kenmore kind of in the 2015 to 2016 ballpark, I think it was. Right in that general ballpark. And by the time I moved to Kenmore, I had actually got up to about 25 students. Kind of in that range. 25. And I remember I was taking horn lessons again, in fact. And even before taking horn lessons, I had studied film scoring. Uh, this was way back in like 2000 and... I want to say 2010 to 2012, uh, 13, 14. I was studying privately a little bit. But it was all in that early 2010 ballpark area. And then, um, but uh, yeah, I got up to about 25 students. I had a really healthy teaching pool by the time I moved to Kenmore. And this is about when I, you guys first saw me on YouTube making my own videos. Because up to the point, before I was lived in Kenmore, I was mainly just, you know, on YouTube, I was just listening to a lot of music. I was, I'd been on Pandora a while back and had some stations there and I had, you know, checked out Spotify a little bit. And on YouTube, I was mainly listening to music and um, kind of had some playlists there and um, building playlists and things. And then I was just kind of watching other things, various things. Hadn't really subscribed to too many, you know, but too many people. And then I wasn't on YouTube very much. And then, um, yeah, I mean, by the time I got to Kenmore, so there's a gentleman that, I was watching that. It's like, yeah, maybe you should make your own, start making your own videos. So I was like, okay. So you, the first time you saw me, the very first time you saw me was in Kenmore, at my old place in Kenmore. And I remember I was at that point working with, Take Lessons had partnered with Amazon. And I was kind of teaching with Amazon. That was kind of a, a whole other situation. <laughs> but whatever, you know. Um, I was teaching a lot of students and I was doing a lot of stuff with the horn, a lot of stuff with the horn and then uh, horn lessons. And, and I was, uh, yeah, good times, but uh, it was a little stressful, busy schedule. Yeah. And then um, very busy at times. Very, very, very busy. Um, I went from 25 students to like 35, just a bunch of students, had a whole bunch. I still had a lot of, had a lot of beginners. Um, you know, and as I was mentioning this stuff, I remember bringing uh, some people that I taught that I could, you know, here and there that popping in my head. But so I had a whole bunch of beginners. I had some intermediates and I really hadn't had a lot of advanced students. There were probably a small number, a smaller number that were advanced or beyond. And then um, really within the last, I would say, you know, five, yeah, I'd had intermediate students. Sure, I'd had some intermediate students and stuff, but I've been, I've been getting an increasing number of more skilled intermediate and advanced students in more re the last five years. Um, especially the piano, but also a, a growing number of composition students and uh, horn students that are more skilled somewhat. But yeah, I had, I always had a lot of take lesson students. I started teaching, you know, in Kenmore, I started teaching uh, 
more in, well, again, I was teaching Bellevue a lot, but also Kirkland, again, a little bit more, and uh, Redmond. I started teaching at Woodenville a lot. I was, I had all these, started getting, I started getting that, more take lesson students at Woodenville. And uh, there was a horn, a horn instructor in Redmond that started giving me some of her students, or at least they're doing composition. Well, she's teaching him horn, and she's an awesome lady. And you know, there's all these things that were happening for me. It's great. Um, and this was all well a while back, and then eventually, you know, I was in the low 30s for a while. Just teaching, doing stuff, you know, other things here and there. Um, eventually, we get to COVID nineteen, and this, you know, would have been yeah, March this year. And I'm, you know, I've definitely I've lived in my new place for a while the last few years. Um, some stuff, you know, happening here and. And, um, so I'm, I'm very used now to teaching a lot of students, having a big teaching pool. Like my pool of students went from like the thirties, low thirties, all the way down to like the, the teens again. Um, uh, and since COVID-19, it's been gradually, very slowly going, getting back up again to almost 20 now. But my brother said he'd start taking lessons, you know, and. And, um, but yeah, I, I just had these more advanced students and, um, you know, during all this time, during the 12 years of teaching, you know, one year at Central Washington for free, kind of just teaching a one family, another girl, two, and then, um, but yeah, mostly, you know, the, this general area, I, I came to know all these, you know, different piano methods, uh, a lot of books, some fair, yeah, fair number of books I didn't ever use when I was in my teens studying piano, or taking piano lessons. But you know, the better you get at the piano, it's just you know, it's no big thing to get more familiar with other stuff. So I was getting familiar with all these different methods, just you know, not sticking with one, just being very flexible. I already knew a whole bunch about horn methods, of course whole whole bunch you know, so that's my main instrument is horn and so i already knew what i was doing on the horn composition kept you know was, you know something where it's like i was an extremely strong composer in the pro level so i was just i knew what i was doing again about that area but that was really and I, I you know really enjoyed being able to teach how i wanted to teach be able to push students that wanted to be pushed being gentle with the the shy, gentle, you know, beginners. And, you know, just people you had to, you know, I, I just love being able to personalize my teaching. And um, I'm, I'll make a part two to this, maybe more, um, because more should ought to be said, you know, with all this stuff. But, and so, you know, it's been a little different, you know, but I had a PPP loan and I looked into doing and making more money via other stuff recently, like possibly considering Uber Eats, we'll see. But, but it, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that came before I got to the point I was at, and it, sometimes it's it can't be easy to forget what what happened to to help me get here. You know, it was no small feat getting to the point where I had. 30 students <sighs> and you know I mean because I don't know I mean it it's just hard starting out you have to do other things for a bit before you can get your teaching pool up strong enough and there's so many things I learned there's so many experiences I had talking to other teachers uh, so I'm going to make a part two here, wrap this one up.
think about what I didn't say in this first video. Um, but yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Take care. Bye.